Call the general committee meeting to order, please. Ms. Foche, will you lead us in a prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening asking for your guidance as we make decisions affecting the school children in our parish. As our students enter into the testing this week, we ask a special blessing for every child, granting them the calmness and patience to do their best. We know our teachers have prepared them well, and we ask that you bless them for their hard work. These things we ask in your name. Miss Lamorne, will you lead us in a pledge, please? Yes. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Miss Foche, will you do roll call, please? <clears throat> Mrs. Acevedo? Here. Mr. Campbell is not with us. Dr. Kraft? Mr. Egan, Here. Mr. Gaines, Here. Mr. England, Here. Mrs. Dysart, Here. Mrs. Lemoyne, Here. Mr. Long, Here. Mr. Smith, Here. and Mr. Warner. Here. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fulcher. Item number four, Super News. Mr. Lemoyne, mm -hmm. glad to have you here, sir. Glad to be here. Yeah, uh, kick off here. Um, as you know, uh, every month, uh, Alex LaPray, Schneider, Jack, and I always put together a little. That's the handout. Super News uh, <laughs> program to try to promote all the good things that are happening in our school system. So, uh, you know, they say uh, pictures worth a thousand words. So we have like thousands and thousands of, <laughs> of, of words for you. It's about eight minutes long. So this is April's Super News. Good. And now from the desk of the superintendent's office, it's time for Super News. Hi, I'm Alex Schneider. And I'm Barry Lamorne, and welcome to Super News, where we begin with some important information about our younger students and how they can become a part of our school family. Pre-K-4 registration is now open. Our district is one of the few in the state to offer universal, tuition-free Pre-K-4 at every school site. As research and experience show, exposing students to full-day preschool education improves language, literacy, and math skills setting a strong foundation for all of our future OWLs. For more information, visit our district website. The Cultural Arts Center at Shamut High School continues to be a buzz with quality performances. The recent Glitter and Gloves show is a true celebration of talent and hard work. This annual Broadway review performed by the members of the CHS Voices is a great showcase as the vocal program continues to develop young voices and create incredible performance opportunities. This year's show included selections from major classics such as Hairspray, Anastasia, and Les Mis, with many of the songs spotlighting the talents of the 22 seniors who will graduate this spring. Congratulations to everyone on stage and behind the scenes in helping make Glitter and Gloves truly sparkle. Also taking place on stage recently was the annual LMEA competition. For the last several years, Shawmut High School has been the site for the Louisiana Music Educator Association competition, hosting concert bands from a number of schools across the metro area. And this year's OWL concert band really soared, scoring superior in each of the three stage categories, the highest scores awarded. Congratulations to Jason Rusk and the OWL Band, and thanks to Fred Bear and his tech students for keeping all of the events at the CAC running smoothly. And now we'll go from music to nutrition as our district recently celebrated National Nutrition Month, which includes School Breakfast Week. Here we see some of our school board members who joined our cafeteria staff to help serve our students, emphasizing the importance of making informed food choices and developing healthy eating habits. You know, breakfast is always an important part of a student's successful daily routine, but that is especially true during testing. Students throughout our district in grades 3 through 12 are partaking in standardized assessments this week. Testing can be a stressful time for our students, but there are a few things that families can do to help. In addition to eating a good breakfast, make sure your child also gets a good night's sleep and arrives to school on time. 
Also, provide your student with encouragement during this time and stay positive. To learn more about your child's testing schedule, please visit your school's website or the website below. And now it's time for Teacher Feature, as presented by the members of our school board. Today we salute Maggie Roussel, fourth grade teacher leader at Arlene Miro Elementary. Maggie is an extremely bright and energetic educator who is a team player and teacher leader. She is always willing to lend a helping hand, always going above and beyond, not only for her students, but also for her co-teachers. Maggie is a dedicated and inspiring leader, a great role model, and an asset to Arlene Miro Elementary School. We are fortunate to have her in our school system. So in this clear and in this gap between the trees, they're looking at something, yellow great battalions of them blowing in the breeze. What have they mentioned that's yellow? Daffodils. daffodils, right? So whoever's going down this road is going to stop Right? And they're going to see these daffodils in this tree clearing, right? We would also like to recognize Michelle Folan, a teacher leader at Riley Alternative. She spends countless hours, which includes arriving at school two hours before any child steps into the building. She does with planning ways to best implement the curriculum. She is always willing to listen to her students and tailors her instruction to best serve them. While she holds high expectation and pushes them each and every day, she creates a warm and welcoming and learning environment where students are comfortable to ask questions and explore new ideas. Thank you, Ms. Folden, for all you do for the children of St. Bernard Parish. This is what you're going to focus on while we're reading the piece. And then you're going to write an AEC. You're going to have to write your assertion, your evidence, and your commentary. Congratulations, and thank you all for what you do for our students each and every day. We'd also like to give a special shout out to everyone who participated in the recent Lions Club Golf Tournament. Dozens of golfers hit the links this year at the Oak Harbor Golf Course, raising money to serve the children of St. Bernard Parish. Special thanks to Paul Granberry and all of the volunteers who made this whole, get it, whole, event possible. We'd also like to recognize Shamet Refining PBF Energy for their continued support of our Academic Games program. Here we see refining representatives Elizabeth Ellison Frost, Dorothy Steele Hills, and Jerry Forstall presenting the board with a check. These funds help defray the cost of our national teams as 20 of our best and brightest students will travel to Knoxville, Tennessee at the end of the month to compete in this year's National Academic Games Tournament. I'd just like to thank Shamet Refinery, Mr. Herstal, uh, Ms. Frost, Ms. Hills, um, for their dedication to our academic games for over the 20 something years that they said and I know our students are going to go out there and shine for St. Bernard School District. We wish all of our players and coaches well and know that they will probably represent their schools in our community. In other news, our search to hire passionate and driven teachers continues. Here in St. Bernard, there are two pathways to employment. For traditionally certified staff, the journey begins by attending our job fair on May 12th. We also offer an alternative certification program called Teach St. Bernard for those college graduates with a degree outside of education. The deadline to be a part of our alternative certification program is quickly approaching. Please visit the website below for more information about Teach St. Bernard. Remember, good teachers matter every day to every child. Well, that would just about wrap it up for this edition of Super News. But before we go, let's take a quick look at some of the fun and the spirit on display at Arlene Miro Elementary School for its recent testing pep rally. Good luck, students, on the testing. And teachers, thank you for all you do. We'll be back next month to highlight more of the good things happening each day in our schools. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Super News. Where we always let the, the Super, Super News, News roll. roll. And we'll see you next time. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, Mr. Lemoyne, you and Ms. Snyder do a fantastic job, as always. And Jack Jackson makes all the magic, so uh, <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good team. So thank you all. We'll see you all thank in May you. for some more good news. Thank oh, you, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, moving on to item number five, Mr. Wayne Burgess, Eggs uh, Center update, please. It's glad to have you here, sir. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> Appreciate y'all having me tonight. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I do just want to give y'all um, <clears throat> just kind of an update overview of our 4-H programming. We I gave you this one right here, which is a list of the activities, like the educational programs we do in the schools, because you know we are co-curricular with the Bessie Board, so they allow us to go into the schools once a month, as long as we're doing. Um, educational programming so these are some of the programs that we do uh, when we go in below that are some of the activities we do with the kids in the parish most of the times those are on a Saturday uh, just simply because we don't want to bother kids during the week and Sunday's out so um, then we have at the bottom down there we have the environmental trips or end of the year trips that we take with the kids um, the overnight camps you know, this is the time of year we crank up, actually. Um, you know, I got 4-H camp coming up. We got 4-H university. We just got a whole bunch of things that start happening come the end of the school year. But that's the time you have access to the kids where you can do activities with them. Um, we added Miro Elementary this year, so we're excited about that. Uh, we have two uh, leaders over there. We have a fourth and a fifth grade club, and it shows you. So now we're at, I think, like 22 clubs in um, St. Bernard That's Parish. Cool. The middle school clubs, the high school clubs that we have, and um, I know that's very quick and very brief, but um, I will say this, we couldn't do what we do without your support. Right. Okay, it means, that, it means a lot to us. One of the things that I do want to talk about is upcoming is our annual Ag Magic. I think this is the, is it the fourth or fifth year that we're doing this? I can't remember. But these are the dates for this year's Ag Magic. It will start uh, May 8th and go to May 11th. Now, we added a day this year. So we have been going Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with the educational tours. What we did was we added Tuesday because the problem that we see is because it's not just, you know, we bring all the St. Bernard kids there, but if you're a parish coming in from outside, it's tough to get back by the time the buses embark mm -hmm. to go home or disembark to go home so uh, what we're doing is we're cutting the field trips off at like noon so we added another day so that we could add those other parishes that want to come in and participate in our programming um, so we've got Tuesday to Friday is the school trips each day we probably got I'm just gonna guesstimate right now probably 800 kids or something like that listed for each day. We haven't completely finished filling up those slots yet, but it'll be close to a thousand a day if all those can come. You know, sometimes like last year, weather comes into a, becomes a factor, different types of things. Um, so those numbers, but we probably saw about 700 kids or something like that a day last year. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday is our comeback day, mm -hmm. where a child comes through. They see it with their parent. Um, I mean, they want to come back, bring their parent, bring their grandparent. So uh, that is kept for Saturday. So um, if any of y'all want to come out and see it or just come out and participate and help us, I know a lot of you have. Um, uh, we appreciate y'all's support. And we appreciate uh, Mr. Warner's support because he also helps us by bringing out some of Shalmet High School students. I know we have 4-H kids out there. We have Key Club kids that come out there. Right. Um, we have, um, I think in the past, maybe some volleyball team members that mm -hmm. come out there. So he, he has a good collection of kids that mm -hmm. he draws from to help us with this. And what they do is they act as tour guides. So uh, it takes about an hour and a half to go through the whole thing because we have a lot of exhibits. And you can't, you got to spend a couple of minutes at least at each station and they help us to walk all of the kids through from beginning to end and then um, our like our ladies our um, VFC ladies our, our homemakers um, the group from Jefferson Parish um, 
I know I'm forgetting somebody, but they provide lunches for us. Mm -hmm. They do a tremendous job of helping us with the volunteers mm -hmm. and also with the kids that come through so we can provide lunch for them because they, they work pretty hard when they start walking that tour through. But anyway, that's all I have for y'all today. Okay. I just wanted to come and give y'all a quick update and, you know, just to say that we appreciate what y'all, your support. Yeah. Y'all do a fantastic job. Just recently, I was up in Baton Rouge with my fellow board members, and um, I went to the 4-H. They had a 4-H kids come in there, mm -hmm. and they gave it the, the, the spiel about, you know, their leadership, their self-confidence. It's just not fooling with you know livestock and right. you know, plants and that but y'all teach them even more you know the self-confidence and the leadership and that that's what i get at that y'all doing a fantastic job and just keep it up well i appreciate that and we try to i mean uh, what we want is we want to produce good citizens that's right. the bottom line i was looking at y'all's monitor up there i remember when maggie roussel was in 4-h program you know, she's <laughs> a little big kid. now sebastian roy that was a long time ago right. Right. but you know i mean we got tony morales he's the vice principal now down there he was one of our kids so right. we've got kids carl's kids we, we've got kids that come through our program and that's really what we want we're, we're hoping that um you know that to just be good citizens for st bernard parish or wherever they choose to live and you're doing a fine job oh thank you mr gaines yeah, you had my kids. We yeah. <laughs> were definitely a 4 each household. My wife was a uh, she was our leader. leader. Yeah, it was a leader at uh, Borgard and St. Bernard Middle. Yes, sir. And uh, my both my girls still t to this day they talk about 4 H. You know, and so uh, that's important. Especially this is my daughter's passion, and she's going to be a dolphin lawyer uh, right. one day. So uh, that's mm -hmm. coming from her 4 H experience. But one thing, I'm a little enticement. If you volunteer for Saturday. This gentleman's going to provide jambalaya, and mm -hmm. his, his jambalaya is the best of this world. <laughs> so, well, I appreciate the kind words, okay? But, yeah, what we do is for Saturday is um, I cook for the volunteers. So um, I just make a big pot of jambalaya. Some of y'all may have had it in the past, some of y'all not. But um, um, it's, you know, just something we do just to say thank you. Because we actually have some people from St. Charles Parish that come in. There's a... An educator over there, I can't think of his name right off the top of him, but he has a, a big environmental program, and he brings in kids on that Saturday, and they bring in reptiles and all kinds of different exhibits that the kids really find fascinating. Mm -hmm. So um, we're proud of it. Uh, we, you know, we're thankful to y'all. We're thankful to the Miro Foundation you know, for mm -hmm. allowing us to uh, be a part of this program with them. And um, every year we try to add a component to it maybe more to make it a little more educational for the kids who come through so anyway i've said enough All thanks right. i wait, appreciate it wait, Ms. Dice, I'd like to oh, say okay something. thank you wayne um and thank you for coming tonight on um, your presentation 4-h is is just a wonderful educational program it's been around for many many years yeah. my, my children also participated and i actually participated in 4-h right. 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 at trist middle school yes, mm -hmm. years ago but it, it it's just wonderful that 4-h is still right. uh you know uh, a lot of giving us giving our students so many opportunities and i see that a lot of the programs have have expanded even you know with the 4-h camp and the cook cooking contest and all and i just had a couple of questions or asked if sure. you could expand on the 4-h loss camp what is how do, oh i'm sorry yeah that's that? a, a loss is an acronym for its out uh, louisiana outdoor science and technology so what they do is once you know all summer long there are participants at 4-h camp from different parishes mm -hmm. so our week this year is the first week of june i forget the dates but um when those conclude the week after that they have what they call lost camp which is for seventh and eighth graders from across the state to attend okay and basically i like the camp i've worked it before uh, but basically what they do is they do kind of key on science engineering technology types of activities with the kids so when we're at camp we in the morning they have a track they go in but in the afternoon we do recreation when they're at lost camp the morning and the afternoon they're in the same track they'll have three different tracks on three separate days so like for instance if they and they pill, picked rocketry one morning mm -hmm. uh in the morning they would build rockets and afternoon they would shoot them hmm. so mm -hmm. it's a good camp it really is well it's just wonderful because it, it looks as though uh, every year you know 4-h programs continue to expand you know we try for, we for try our students and i know that week-long camp for, uh, i tell you what we've got over very I think we got like a hundred 
four kids signed up to go to 4-H right. camp this year. That's from mm -hmm. St. Bernard Parish? Yeah, we got to get a new bus. That's <laughs> I mean, we got to add another bus. We normally take three buses. We'll have to take four this year. That is great. Those are good problems. I'm, I'm, so, glad, I'm glad to hear more. I don't know what we did, but. Participate. Y'all yeah. doing good things. Well, thank, thank you very you much. For thank you for having Thank you again, Lynn. Appreciate it. Lauren couldn't be here. I'm sorry. Lauren couldn't be here. Um, they woke up. They had a, a pine tree limb through the roof of their house. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like, oh. I gotta go fix my roof. I'm like, it's gonna rain, I get that. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Okay. Okay, we'll move on to item number six is the building. Mr. Warner, will you take over please? Yeah, thank you. I'll cover for Mr. Campbell who's recovering from WrestleMania this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tris building was actually my item on the agenda and uh, I think Mr. Dewey and Mr. Lakeen, y'all wouldn't mind give us an update on uh, the progress? Thank you all for having us here this evening. Um, as you know, we've been working in under construction on the Trist edition throughout the course of the school year, and we are entering the home stretch at this point. So, um, by and large, uh, Mr. Lakeen is going to give you guys a, a detailed update on that now. But uh, we are looking very good as far as our time frames go. The initial contract was contracted out at 12 months. However, we look to be on time to have a 10-month completion on this project, or at least substantial completion at 10 months, so that will be an excellent piece to have. Um, we are scheduled to start potentially moving furniture into the building as early as the second week of June. So um, our time frames are looking good. Um, we've had you know, no major, to this point, uh, hitches or glitches that are going to cause us major um, you know, delays or anything along those lines. So um, I'll kind of turn it over to Mr. Lakeen and he can you know, provide us with a little bit more of a detailed um, explanation of where we are and where we're headed. And then uh, following that, we did bring some pictures to show you guys and to kind of talk through and to also answer any questions you may have. So. Good afternoon and uh, good evening to the board. Uh, welcome to our new board member, Mr. Smith. Uh, thanks for having me here this afternoon. Uh, the last time I was here, I believe I was here with Mr. Albert Carey, um, mm -hmm. whom we all miss, of course. Um, I did speak to him recently. He did say to say hello to everybody. Uh, he misses everybody and being in St. Bernard quite a bit. At the same time, he seems to be having a pretty good time where he is too. <laughs> so, uh, as Jason just mentioned, our Trist, um, project is moving along at a very good pace. Uh, the contractor is well ahead of schedule. Uh, we've been very fortunate, uh, notwithstanding a little bit of a setback at the early stages of the project with weather, we've been able to overcome that and uh, once more, as just mentioned, the project is tracking to be delivered uh, over a month uh, before its uh, scheduled completion date. Uh, work underway right now uh, includes um, the finish out of the interiors of uh, the air conditioning system has now been activated in preparation for the placement of interior finishes. Uh, the site work, which we'll see some photography of in just a moment of, uh, as we move along, is very exciting to me to see that uh, ball field taking shape is absolutely terrific. Um, the project um, budget is being able to be maintained uh, very well also. Um, here we're looking at, by the way, a picture of the building exterior uh, facing from the ball field toward the gymnasium. Uh, that green band that's so uh, prominent in that photograph right there is actually going to be a fascia band that uh, is architecturally tied back to the design of the original building. Uh, we tried to complement uh, the existing building design and architecture in this building, and I think that once it's finished, it's going to be a very successful uh, design. Uh, I was about to mention that uh, budget-wise, um, our project is tracking at, uh, as usual for our projects with the school board, at less than a 1% uh, change order rate, uh, which is uh, pretty fantastic. I'd like to compliment uh, our architects and our engineers, our project managers, in doing a really good job. And, maintaining the contract cost. Um, we've done so many projects with the board with Gibbs Construction, who is a contractor here. Um, I think we've just about got it figured out. <laughs> so this, this one's moving along very, very well. And I'm proud to say that uh, uh, the, the, the project budgets have been able to have been preserved. 
Uh, here we're looking at uh, what we call the commons. Uh, it's a rather small building, but at the same time, given the site uh, location, the orientation, the geography of the, of the site, we were able to create this unique space inside the building. It really adds a lot of excitement uh, to otherwise a rather small building. Uh, we try and get away from the um, linear bowling alley style uh, corridors, and this gives the building a space for uh, community, for gatherings, for the display of projects, and it just adds a degree of excitement to the building that I think um, supports the educational mission that, uh, of course, all of these buildings are ultimately designed to accomplish. Um, beyond that, um, if uh, we can see some interior shots, uh, here you can see the beginnings of the ceiling installation. The grid is up, the lights are placed, uh, the casework is now going to be begun to be assembled. That's the materials that you see on the floor there. Uh, the trademark um, epoxy faced glaze block walls. Wonderful materials. Uh, the, the school district down here is so fortunate to have the quality of construction. Uh, that's uh, been able to been featured in these buildings. These are far and away the best school buildings that uh, we see in the state of Louisiana. These are remarkable um, facilities that St. Bernard Parish has. Uh, this is the ball field. Um, I believe this is the softball field. Jason may be able to help me with this Actually, one. Actually, this is uh, shooting back and facing the, um, this appears to be. This is one of the ball fields. We have yeah, softball. That's, that's and softball, and then in a minute we're going to have a picture that's going to have um, these here with the red clay. That's our baseball backstop, right. as well as the prep beginning for the infield. So um, we're underway on that as well with uh, irrigation projects to make sure that that's a green field year round. So those pirates are playing on some nice stuff over there. <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, those guys are very happy about that as well. Softball as well, and uh, there's also a soccer field adjacent to the uh, baseball and softball fields with a concession stand um, set up there in the middle to service that as well. So, I was sorry. walking around the job site with Jason the other day, and he wanted to go see the ball field. That's what he wanted to focus on. He said he's got a couple of kids that are playing ball right now. Can't wait to get them out there. I keep joking, you know, instead of like a christening, we could have like a celebratory first pitch or a home run derby, but you know, that, that's so far no one's buying that. Um, was that all the pictures? Yes, that was, okay. that was it so far. Um, beyond the photographs that we just saw as well, we have um, an expansion of the parking areas at uh, the Trist uh, campus. And all of that parking is now in place. Uh, it has yet to be striped. There's some signage that yet needs to go up. Um, but um, once more, all in all, the project is moving very, very smoothly. And we look forward to opening the building with the school board uh, over the course of the next couple of months. It's getting very close. Any questions? Great. Any questions from anybody? I have one. Mr. Long, thank you. Um, thank you, gentlemen. Um, refresh our memory. How many classrooms will we have in this wing? I think there are 12, and then there's a computer class. We have nine standard classrooms and then two labs. We have a computer and a science lab, which, of course, the, the science lab can also serve as a classroom and the computer lab if necessary as well. And, and it uh, will primarily house the eighth graders. The eighth older grade. kids will, it'll be the eighth grade wing okay. primarily. And this, uh, Oh, I imagine um, until we get that influx from the elementary grades, um, it may be a little underused in the beginning. Is that correct? Uh, oh, no? space is never underused. <laughs> any well, you ask any principal, there is not enough space, no matter how much you put out. No, but it, it will be because the nine classrooms um, will accommodate all of the eighth graders and even the projection for the upcoming years, and it will have its own science lab, so the eighth grade science lab will be in that wing with them as they go around to their core area classes, and the computer lab will be there as well. So it's pretty well going to be everything that the eighth graders need, all core area classes, science, computers, and they would only exit that building for lunch and whatever their elective may be, if it's band or if they go to you know, physical education or those types of things. But all of their classes, they will be in that expansion way. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I applaud the administration for mm -hmm. being forward thinking and 
and I think one of the main reasons we we wanted to add a wing was because of the possible influx in in later years. Is that correct? Right. Absolutely, Ms. Long. Because the other two middle schools, as we all know, prior to Katrina, were high schools, and the buildings are large, so there's plenty room at St. Bernard Middle because it was housed at the old St. Bernard High and an Andrew Jackson Middle because of the large building. It was only Trist Middle School that we looked um, to anticipate with the growing enrollment not having enough space. So we're fine at the other two. But as you said, planning for the future is what we needed to do for Trist. And I think the ball fields are going to be oh. a big, big plus. And for that just area. so everybody knows, at Andrew Jackson, when we did its renovation, they have the beautiful, they have the really nice fields there, and then at St. Bernard High as well. So Trist is now coming up to speed with what the other middle schools in our system have in terms of the ball fields. Okay, thank you, Mr. Long. Anyone else? Well, um, I, I went and passed. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Gaines. It's not really about uh, Tris. I want to take a point of privilege here. Right. You wanted to talk about. Yeah. Uh, right. Also, another uh, project that's going on right now is Sebastian Roy's demolition, and what I'm really proud of is the fact that the administration has uh, placed uh, protective fencing around all the trees there to protect them from the demolition. So I just want to applaud administration and your staff for doing that. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Gaines. But I just, uh, I happened to pass the Trist project, and um, I can't believe y'all managed to match the brick perfectly. <laughs> it's, a, it's unbelievable it is, it, that the brick is absolutely the same exact color as the, the uh, school that was there. And that is it's a, you know, it's a great use of space because when you go there, it's almost like that building fits there. You know, it's, it's like it, was almost, it should have been there the whole time, even with the... Uh, to build out of the ballparks and everything. Yeah. So. The, the geometry worked very well for us. And uh, talking about the brick for just a moment, that's actually a blend of bricks. And what we do is uh, gather bricks that have a close match to the original building and then blend them in different ratios until we achieve that palette that, that looks, that gives yeah. us an equal appearance. Wow. Well, and, uh, the principal, Ms. Pritchett, took credit for that. So, just <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, it, it was a team effort. <laughs> a lot of mock-ups stared at to get that. Right. I do have a question <laughs> on additional parking, though. Um, right. They do have a lot of events, and there's not a lot of parking off street there. But we did add some parking. I didn't notice that. On right. That. I couldn't get in the back. Yeah, there's um, additional parking spaces at the main entry to the gym. Not many. I think that we may have gotten about 10 spaces right there. Uh, and then um, behind the gym, I believe there's uh, 40 spaces. I don't know the exact count, but it's a, a rather sizable lot. It may not be quite that big, but quite a few parking spaces we were able to incorporate into the layout of the land back there where the ball fields are going. So as, as everything's being finished, the drive back there is being finished, they're incorporating parking spaces there as well. So they'll, they'll be very usable and accessible. We won't have as many issues with, with weather uh, damaging the area back mm -hmm. there. We'll still be able to park and come in and out. And the uh, time frame on us, that will be in June, same July? Yeah, uh, yes. same time frame. Great. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's great. Well, I'm excited for the eighth graders at Trist mm -hmm. to finally have, you know, their own little space. And uh, the building's going to be beautiful. So It's going to be very nice. Thank you guys for the update. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, Ms. Well, Voce. I'll wait until y'all finish. Okay. Up. I'm sorry, Ms. Go ahead. I saw it. No, it's okay. I was just going to say I'm very excited for the whole school, but for the eighth graders. They have their own space. It'll be kind of like the senior stairs, you know, used to be. But at the eighth grade, you know, their own building, and it, it looks great. Great job, Mr. Philip King. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dewey. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just, to, just to comment, the parking space, we did take every usable spot we in did. the design to increase the, the amount of parking. So behind the, the gym as as Jason was saying, and, and, and Mike as well, but in front of the gym, and then there was that grassy area between the gym and the existing parking lot that we added a few, I think, spaces to yeah. as well. Uh, but I want to take this opportunity, and I know that Ms. Pritchard will be telling our current eighth graders and their families, because of the construction and really no place to park there, the eighth grade exit ceremony which we normally, you know, no. we do at yeah. each school for no. this year only at Trist 
we're going to be moving it to the um, same time and okay. as we always do at the, at, during the day at the um, back in the Cultural Arts Center, the Power Center, um, one time only this year because we do not have sufficient parking around Trist with all the construction going on. Okay. So that information will be going home to the parents uh, of the eighth graders, but I just wanted to, while we were on this topic, right. to say that right. because there's no way we could be able to accommodate that many families um, and, and not really uh, be most intrusive around the neighborhood this year. And then the, the other thing I just want to, you know, as we've been through this very, very long, I guess, building program since uh, Katrina, this really, I think, is our last actual building or building expansion piece. And I just want to publicly thank Mike Lakeen. Um, he has been with us since the beginning, has designed many, many of our buildings and projects. He's worked a great deal with Gibbs on and off over the years, depending upon how the bids came out. They've done an incredible job with us. We've learned so much over the past, how many years has it been now? 13? 13 years. 13 <laughs> years. And um, it's been a tremendous relationship, and um, I'm just so pleased with everything that has happened. I want to thank Mike for his professionalism, his calmness throughout the process. Every time we need something, he's there, Johnny, on the spot. Um, and uh, I think he and, and his firm have really put their mark on the St. Bernard Parish public school system. And uh, I, I do know that, and I guess I'll just say it at this point, your father, wasn't he, it, he did designing Shelby High School? quite a few schools right. down here for the in St. Bernard School Board in right. the 60s, including and Shelmet High School. Including right. Shelmet right. High School. So it's been a long, yeah. long history. And, uh, That's great. No, and, and Jason, who has come on to take his job in this last year, especially with Mr. Uh, Carey retiring, has been the project manager for this for us and has done an incredible job as well. So I just want to thank him as well. And Mike, thank you for everything that you've done for our children here in St. Paul. I'd like to add to that um, my own thanks for the school board's entrustment of such an important project to my firm, to my team of architects and engineers. It's been a labor of love and truly a career-defining uh, opportunity. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. That's it. Thanks a lot, That's it. folks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, move on to item number seven, which is education, Mr. Gaines. Summer reading program, Ms. Hello. Halton. How are you? Fine. Good evening. Um, each year, of course, we try to promote reading in the schools. You know that. And um, um, <clears throat> we're going to send a letter home, which we did last year, too, with all the kids from um, elementary school to high school to um, tell them that we're going to have the AR um, library open at um, Davies during our summer program. So it'll be open from um, June uh, <coughs> 1st until um, June 22nd, OK? So the, the library will be open for those days to come and take AR tests. We also, I also purchase books at each elementary school, and Mary purchased some at the middle and high schools, that we have copies of the books in case the parents couldn't buy them, they can go to the schools, and that's in the letter that if they would like to um, borrow a book and bring it back, it will be in the school for them if they would like it. Um, th on the first page, it's the elementary. We just have required reading or hopefully required reading. We encourage it for third, fourth, and fifth grade students, and we give them extra credit when they come back in the fall. <coughs> and then the reading list for the middle school is next, and then the high school is after that. Um, but basically, um, <coughs> we just encourage them to go to the public oh. library to get a book or to come to the school to get a book that, because we have copies of, of all, all the books. And we're hoping that a lot of the kids take advantage of it and come to Davies to take an AR test. And if they don't take it during the summer, we also have a log for them that they can write a little synopsis of the story and then take the AR test when they get back into the 
school if, if nobody can bring them during the summer. Because that's the problem. A lot of people don't have transportation to bring the kids. Mm -hmm. So if they don't have transportation, we let the kids take the test when they get back. Awesome. Any questions? Question. Yes, sir. Mr. Long. Uh, well, I was just wondering, uh, there's no more bookmobile, right? Oh, no. <laughs> now, for a while, we had um, a couple of the schools had a school bus, and they put it into a bookmobile. But it was kind of, that, that, was, that was pretty interesting. The kids right. liked that. But no, we don't have that anymore. Right, that would, that would be nice. To no. Have. Okay, thank you. Ms. Dice Harden. Thank you, Ms. Halton. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that we're <coughs> going to have Davies open. Yes, we had it open last summer, too. But it seems like it's more extended this no, year. No, it's, huh? it's during the days of summer skills. Okay. You know, it's only like for maybe three, three and a half weeks. Okay, and then what are the times? From um, 8.15 until 12.45 daily. 12.45, okay. And all the um, And high school, middle notified. school, anybody can come to take the test. But the pa a parent has to come with the kids. Okay. But the parents, I'll be notified that the Yes. That they yes. Are we going to send a letter home with report cards? Okay, great. Okay. I'm so glad. Thank you. Ms. Lemoyne. I just wanted to thank you, mm -hmm. Ms. Harlton, for oh. putting together this great sure. um, comprehensive list. There's a great selection yes, of there books. Yes, We know that students are more motivated to read when they have choice. Right. So this is a great um, comprehensive list of right. high-quality books. And, and I think I think if they look at it, they would find something that yes, would attract them. absolutely. There's something here for everyone. Mm -hmm. And thank you also for giving that option for families that don't have transportation sure. for doing the, the paper, pencil, sure. synopsis. So sure. But we do do a synopsis, and they can take the test over when they come back. Thank okay. you. No Anybody problem. else have any questions? Okay, I was taken back to the summer of 19, well, maybe the fall and summer of 1970-71, my senior year at Shellman High School. I'm looking at the oh, books. you're a youngster. Huh? Incoming. <laughs> <laughs> Lord of the Rings trilogy, I read that. Mm -hmm. um, Tale of Two Cities. I mean, I'm, I'm like, it's awesome. I know. The, the These books are really great. awesome. If, yeah. and, and for the little ones, it's little novels for them to read, which is great. You know? Thank you very much. Thank you. Anything else? <laughs> I'm done. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's it? Thank you, Ms. Halpin. Okay. We move, we move on to item number eight. <laughs> Personal changes, Mr. Paul Granberry. Glad to have you here, sir. I'm done too, but it's <laughs> <laughs> long day, huh, Paul? Long day, long, long two days, let's say. You, know, so. you notice we have a couple of retirees. Uh, mm. The three educational retirees represent, I hate to tell you this, but 110 years of education, wow. you know, they're between be, three people. So. They're going to be surely missed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. But we wish them well. Yes. If that's what you want. Thank you, Mr. Granberry, and congratulations to you and the Lions Club on an excellent, oh, um, thank you. A successful little, day. A little nasty <laughs> weather at times, but it was okay. We got it, we got it done, so oh. thank you. Thank you for all y'all do with that. But on looking at the retirees list, Donna Schultz, when I heard that she was retiring, my heart sunk. It's like, oh, Donna. You know, she's just been an excellent educator and, um, you know, teacher principal at Joe Davies and she's you know she's going to really be missed uh, um, you know I know she's got a, a, a great support staff there with yeah. Tiffany and all mm -hmm. all the wonderful teachers there um, but she Donna I just want to wish you congratulations and a happy retirement and thank us for her many years of service whenever you see Donna it looked like you know she, that that's you know nothing was a big deal she just Made everything look easy. Yeah, just she did a, a, an excellent job, and again, you'll be she'll be missed. And then do, Dr. Montreal um, Senegar, you know, she's been an excellent principal also, and um, she's been with us for quite a few years. And and I want to wish her a happy retirement and tell her thank you for your, her many years of service. Mm -hmm. And again, she always looked, you know, cool, calm, and collected, and like her job was, you know, just a part of them. And um, and then Norman Sedlander, we're going to thank him for his many years of service and um, wish him a happy retirement. Oh, and on the support personnel, Diane Delares, Dela um, we want to wish you a happy retirement and thank you for your many years of service to the yeah. children of St. Bernard Parish. Well, Donna can't hear you right now because she's about 
halfway down that hall doing interviews for oh, next yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> Again, when I've asked, you know, you think about all these retirees, just like so many of our um, retirees that come through the system, yeah. you could just tell, you know, children of their heart, and that it, it, it's like, you know, they do what uh, school people do, as mm -hmm. Mr. Warner would say. Absolutely. You know, always smiles on their right. face, and sad to see them go, but we thank them for their many years of service. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nyslow. Anyone else? Well, you got your job full right now, Mr. Cranberry, replacing these. I'm sorry, Mr. Oh, no, Lamar, Mr. Just, Lamar. Yeah. And, and to, um, I know that Ms. Stella Reyes, who's the paraeducator at Shelmet High, is going to be sorely missed. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sedlander, who's been a fantastic social worker for many, many, many years, as uh, Mr. Granberry said, you take the three certificated people, and that's, what, 110 years, 110 years of experience. But our two principals are just incredible people. Uh, Ms. Schultz has done a fantastic job at Joe Davies throughout her career with us in the St. Bernard Public Schools. I mean, she was teaching at Goche, had been Title I facilitator, storm hit, then she moved into the assistant principal at at Davies, if you remember when Denise mm -hmm. Pritchard, Pritchard was, was principal, there. and then when Ms. Pritchard went over mm -hmm. to Tress to take that position, uh, Donna became the principal, and uh, she's going to be certainly missed at Davies. And then Dr. Senegal, I don't know what to say, but she is a fantastic person, an incredible um, administrator. She was with over at Trist for many years as its council, as the counselor at Trist. Mm -hmm and then took over the helm of Andrew Jackson Middle School. Um, incredible test scores for that community. Tremendous job with the students and the teachers and uh, the parents of that community. So uh, it, I guess it's sort of that time in life we're gonna be seeing many of our administrators maybe begin these retirement processes because many of them have been with us 35 years or so and it's right. about time that they have earned that, uh, earned that right to do some relaxation with their families and start the next phase of their career, but I'm, of their life. But I'm sure that they'll be back to help us help volunteer <laughs> in the schools, and I know they're just a phone call away. So, just wish them well. Well, Ms. Foche and I can't remember 35 years. That's true. That's that, was a, that, much that, that was a long time ago. 35 years. <laughs> 47. The upper 80. 40. 47. Yeah. We both got 47 years right now. Yeah. Well, no, I started in Orleans Parish, but she's yeah. been here I've, the whole I've time. I've been here like 47. Time. I had yeah. three years in Orleans before coming here. So. Yep. So. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Grand Baron. Well, ready. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, move on to item number nine. It's the finance, Mr. Warner. Thank you, Mr. England. Thank you, Mr. Ingram. Mr. Fernandez, we're going to revise our budget upwardly, hopefully. Uh, if you wish, sir. No <laughs> reason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in your package, you have the revised budget for the general fund and special revenue funds uh, for 2017 2018. You have five exhibits. Uh, the first is a summary of the general fund. Uh, activity that we're expecting for year-end. Uh, the next two are the details of revenues and expenditures for the general fund. Then we have a summary uh, exhibit for change, uh, revision to the lunch fund budget. And the last one is just an exhibit of our current special revenue fund budgets. So uh, in the first one, if you look at the first three exhibits, uh, the highlights of this, as you see in the summary, it gives our beginning balance in the general fund as of June 30th of last year. Uh, we're projecting revenues of slightly, oh, almost 72 million in uh, expenditures, uh, which include fund balances, encumbrances from the prior year, and other things, and any transfers. Um, in the revenues, basically, we just tightened up on our estimates. Uh, we looked at our existing trends. We upped our estimate on sales taxes a little because our sales tax collections have been doing well. 
and we uh, anticipate ending a little better than we had originally expected. Uh, also, our insurance estimate—I mean, I mean, our interest estimates, uh, because uh, interest rates have been uh, earning extra monies on our uh, different accounts, so we have some extra monies there. And also, it reflects the mid-year adjustment on the MFP, which, as you know, there's adjustments in the spring every year for increases in enrollment, so that going into some extra money as well. Uh, and the expenditure side in the general fund, uh, most of the adjustments have to do with salaries. As you recall, we uh, adopted the original budget in May of last year. We did a slight technical revision in November just to add in some encumbrances and some other things, make some other adjustments. But now we're tightening up the estimates on our salaries. We uh, reflects the actual final salaries for our system, any teachers we might have added or adjustments we might have made to salaries and the related benefits. Uh, it also reflects our actual insurance. Uh, all of our insurance policies, with the exception of flood insurance, have come in, but we're not expecting a great difference in the flood insurance premiums when they come in in May. So we have those amounts adjusted as well, and some other various adjustments to utilities and other things. But uh, that's what we're presenting, and we are projecting on our summary uh, shows our final figures, uh, final fund balances, and the distributions, designations of the fund balances as well. Um, exhibit four is the lunch fund, so we have also tightened up those estimates a bit, uh, which reflects what we expect our actual federal revenues to come in and our costs in the lunch program, as well as salaries, benefits, food costs, and like. And the uh, Exhibit number five for the special revenue funds is mostly informational. You've seen most of these uh, this information in presentations that were made throughout the year for the actual grants that we've done, but this just reflects the actual final grant allocations uh, for our different special revenue funds, federal and state funds, as well as our Avalar maintenance fund, which uh, is funding with that five and a half mil tax that was passed by the voters last year. So um, uh, we are confident in these figures for the end of the year and we'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, who has questions? Ms. Dyson. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Mr. Fernandez, if you would just clarify when you said adjustment on salaries, we're not adjusting anyone's salaries. It's just the no, number of people that we are actually employing based on right. the original projection, right? What happens in our original projection in May, we estimate, because we don't know who our final, we have to hire a lot of teachers. Uh, right. There's a lot of uh, people leaving, people coming in. Mm -hmm. So we just estimate salaries at that time. We might have to add after the beginning of school, depending on how many children show up, we might have to add a couple of positions here and there. So that's just doing that. It's reflecting the actual salaries for the people that we know now we have working for us at this point in time. Okay. So it okay, might go up or down a little bit, you know. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. I just wanted you to yeah. clarify no, we haven't that, that no, we're we not haven't adjusting changed. anybody's salaries. It's just no, the, the uh, total unless amount of salaries that are paid out based on the number of teachers. Number of teachers, and there. you know, occasionally someone might get an advanced degree and move up on the salary okay. schedule, and their salary might change because of that. But you know, no, no other changes like okay. that. I thank you for that clarification for the public. Thank you, Mr. Gaines. I I noticed in the uh, revenues that uh, we have. Uh, added some uh, dollars from the uh, sales tax. We have an increase, uh, which is really nice to hear. That means our parish is moving along in a po more positive direction. And, uh, and the sheriff's collection's up a, a, a percent. It, can you explain that? Sheriff's collection, sheriff's commission is, is something that has to do with Avalorum taxes. A certain amount of the Avalorum taxes have to go towards the retirement systems and things like that. And uh, also, we have a revenue sharing component that goes into that as well, which represents monies that we get from the state and allocation, which compensates us partially for revenues uh, that we don't receive due to the homestead exemption on Avalorum taxes. So 
that changes from year to year, but once those allocations come through and, they, and they're determined by the legislature, once we get those information, we have to book it as revenues mm -hmm. in our, uh, even though it doesn't technically come into our hands, right. it goes to other entities, mm -hmm. we reflect it in our right. statements as a revenue. And uh, the uh, reason why I, I brought that out, I was remembering a couple of sessions back, we talked about uh, increased uh, collecting from the all the entities you know they were mm -hmm. well, I think a year back they were talking about you know for yeah they were going to do an audit of audit, that's the, right. you know uh, Avalorum uh, assessments and uh, that won't go into effect till probably next year okay. so that's all a right. prospective thing not all a right. retrospective thank you Mr. Finnegan all right Dr. Kraft thank you Mr. Warner uh, Mr. Fernandez, yes, on uh, page eight, yeah. yes. looking under supervisor of buildings and grounds. Yes, sir. That seems to be a little low for a salary, but is it something somewhere else or the category that he receives mm -hmm. fund compensation for? Uh, supervisor, uh, let me see. Is this lower than a teacher's salary? Yes, that is because it's a partial salary. See, as you know, there were other, uh, we were, uh, we had FEMA grants in the past that were funding some administrative costs. And since okay, I supervised so the Bill of Grants oversaw a lot of the FEMA rebuilding, we used part of that to fund his salary because he was spending a, a, a large part of his time overseeing those projects. So we could use some of those administrative, co uh, administrative yeah. funds from FEMA to fund those salaries. But now that FEMA projects are all ending, and at the end, we are bringing them back into the general fund. So that's the portion of a salary that'll start. You'll see a larger number next year because this whole salary will be within the general fund right. in 2018. That, that makes sense. Thanks for that uh, clarification. Next month, sure. when we do the projected budget for 18, 2018 19, you'll see that figure go, go up because yes. we won't have the FEMA funds any longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Long. I knew it had to be some fun somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, you know, I, we pay him a, you know, yeah. we don't pay him that much. all right. Salary, yeah. right. <laughs> On page five, Mr. Fernandez, of the expenditures, uh, I noticed about a $24,000 adjustment for school psychologists. Is that because we lost one? Or no, that is because we, we in the original estimate, we had uh, one of us who's a school psychologist that had a doctorate was in there, and then she retired, and we replaced her with a psychologist that did not have a a master's degree. So it reflects mostly a decrease in the, the so overall total salaries because she earns a salary commensurate to a master's degree as, as, in, as opposed to a doctorate. Okay. Okay, great. And she Thanks. also had less years of experience. The, do the doctor was at the top of the scale. She's more or less lower at the <laughs> lower end of the, of the salary scale. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. England. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Well, I'd like to send this to the, the full board with a recommendation. Second. Okay. So we have a first by Mr. England, second by Dr. Kraft. Uh, any other discussion? Anyone else? Well, I just want to uh, comment. I'm, I'm glad that we've got some current collection trends that are moving in a positive direction. Yes, sir. I hope they continue. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you mentioned that uh, we revised our MFP. Do you know like, how many more students we picked up? Uh, uh, I believe it's like maybe 150. Yeah. Yes. Between 125 and 150 from the original projection. So that's why the MFP dollars go out, but you also see salaries going up in that collective because we had to hire more teachers. Uh -huh. right. um, so even if something goes up $100,000, you may be looking at two teachers that we would be adding on for those numbers of uh, students. It's based on enrollment. Right? Based on enrollment. Right. And the um, lunch budget, Yes, sir. We picked up, uh, we're paying for all of our, we, we picked up a grant, right? We're paying for our eighth grader, uh, all up from elementary through eighth grade lunch? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, well, it's a reimbursement. We're oh, okay. getting different reimbursement rates. We applied for the, what's called the community el uh, eligibility provision, which allows us to charge, uh, uh, to get a higher reimbursement rate, but it also 
reflects an increased participation by the students because now that all their lunches are bringing more people are eating, you know, so it's going to be offset by increasing costs. But it does allow, I mean, it's not affecting our budget. It's not affecting the budget. Adversely, you know, it's just shifting, you know, a little more revenue, a little more costs, you know. And if you look at the breakdown on the revenue, you're going to see more in federal revenue and less in local because right. with fewer people paying from the local dollars, maybe would be less than half of what we projected, whereas the federal dollars will increase on the revenue side. Great. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm good. Uh, we have a first by Mr. England, second by Dr. Kraft. All in favor? Is, um, is this working? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's working. Motion passes 10 <laughs> 0. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Mr. Warner, you still got the floor. No, item number 10. <laughs> item number 10 on the front of page is a request for permission to advertise for bid for spices, seasoning, cereal, dried beans, crackers, frozen foods, meat, meat products, poultry and eggs, seafood products, and canned goods. Mm -hmm. Good evening. How are you? How are I'm you today? I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Okay, this is our six-month bid for our food products, and the bid will um, be opened, and the food purchasing will start in July until December. I'll make a motion. All right. I got a first by Mr. Gaines, second by Mr. Long. Any questions? Any discussion? All those in favor? Signify by voting machine. Motion passes 10 0. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Might turn off his mic. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Thank you, Ms. Dean. <laughs> All right. Move on to item number 11, superintendent's recommendation. Ms. Foche. Uh, just some announcements. If you pull out what you had on the super news, on that last page, there are just some dates for upcoming events uh, that you have gotten in the calendars for some of the schools. And again, to the public, uh, either newsletters which are sent home from schools or they're on the website, you can take a look at upcoming events at your child's school. But just to reiterate, uh, we do participate this coming Saturday in the Relay for Life for the parish. We do have a school board booth, so everybody's invited to come by at that time. It's in the Val Reese. Um, which you call that the complex relay for life in Val Reese this Saturday it's from I mean the 21st I'm sorry the Saturday is the parade yeah April 21st and that I think is from um, 2 until 10 2 p.m. till 10 p.m. the celebrating school community banquet and that's for our um, internal school board family where we honor students of the year teachers of the year prince of uh, the um, mm -hmm. volunteers of the year and such that's going to be april 25th mm -hmm. the Sen shaman high school senior award ceremony if you want to mark your calendars for april 30th at that point i know that all of our school board members here and myself we contribute to and give a school board scholarship mm -hmm. that will be also awarded that night april at the 30th, 30th on April 30th at the Senior Awards Ceremony. The Honors Banquet is May 11th. Graduation this year is uh, May 17th. So these dates are listed right here on that piece of paper. Graduation is the New Orleans Arena where it was before. And just for everyone out there, I know we've said it several times over the course of this night, but testing again. <laughs> Um, today we started the online fifth grade testing. Tomorrow we're picking up with the middle school sixth through eighth grade and it's going to be ongoing now. There's a window and then the high school end of course exams will follow and then the paper based third and fourth grade and that's on the calendar we had given you last time. So it is truly the testing season and we're in the middle of it because we've already done a lot of it with our um, special 
Law One students, or that now is called Louisiana Connect, and then for our English language learner proficiency exams, all those have been given beginning in February because those are more individually based, and that goes on through the entire spring. And then these others pick up. So this month and pretty much all of May, our, children, our kids are going to be involved in statewide assessments of some kind. Um, then as well as the advanced placement testing and the CLEP testing, which are for college courses as well. And industry-based certification testing and work keys testing and ACT makeup testing. So we are truly, truly in the testing season, as we call it. That's it, Ms. Foche? That's it. Okay. okay. Anything else for Ms. Foche? Okay, we move on to item number 12, adjournment. I have a motion by Ms. Espea, second by Dr. Craft. All in favor? Aye. This means adjourn. Thank you, folks.